Rebuilding a large old twin cylinder steam engine, this is part 13, the big end bearings and setting the final position of the pistons. At the moment I am tightening some 2BA nuts onto the studs that hold the cylinders in place on the standards. The gaskets that are made are in place and now by tightening up the nuts the cylinders are drawn tightly to the standard and this may cause some binding. So I'm just checking that we don't have any binding of the piston in the bore. This engine is not very well made and some of the fits are a little bit dubious. As it turns out it's ok. Time to look at the big ends. This is a length of 2BA studding. I know this because it has a flag on it that says 2BA. And with this 2BA studding that I've just bought from Blackgate's Engineering, I'm going to make the studs which will hold the bearing caps onto the big ends. And here are the studs that I made. I simply cut them to length with a hacksaw, then put them in the lathe to face them and finish them off with a file. These studs are all going to be fixed in place using Loctite 603. And here I'm applying some Loctite 603 to the threaded hole in the top part of the bearing. And you will see that the bearing surface is not in good condition. It's very scored. And I'm going to do something about this shortly, but the first thing to do is to put the studs into the holes with some Loctite 603. Then put them on one side until the Loctite 603 has cured thoroughly. And when the Loctite is cured thoroughly, you can put the nuts in place, put the bottom caps on, and they look like this. What I've actually done is turned a piece of steel bar to exactly the same size as the crank pins on the crankshaft. This allows me to check the fit of the big end bearings on the crankshaft without actually fitting them to the crankshaft. And as you can see here, they're quite a tight fit when the nuts are tightened fully. That's a good thing because the bearing surface is fairly dreadful. And to put this right I need to machine the inner bearing surface of the big ends. There are two ways of doing this. One would be to put them in the forge or chuck in the lathe and re-bore the bearing. The other way to do it is to use a reamer. And once the internal surfaces of the bearings have been cleaned up using this 9 16 of an inch diameter reamer, the steel test bar is a good fit in the bearing. All that needs to be done now is to just tighten up the nuts on the bottom of the bearing and it will be a really good fit. But before we do that, it's time to add some oil. Before assembling any steam engines, it's very important to oil the surfaces. If you have a dry surface, it may wear very quickly in the first few revolutions of the engine, and it will be ruined. With the small end gudgeon pin fitted to the crosshead, it's time to fit the bottom bearing to the connecting rod. I left the studs on the bottom bearing a bit longer on purpose, because what I'm going to do when I finally assemble the engine is fit lock nuts to this bearing. That will ensure that the nuts never work loose and the bearing cap can never drop off. I've mentioned before that when tightening nuts and bolts on model engines you have to have a touch like a midwife. You have to securely attach the parts without stripping the threads or breaking the component. This takes a bit of practice but when you've been doing it for a while it should come naturally. It's important to have the right size tools. It's no good using full size spanners on very small nuts. These spanners are designed for model engineers and you can put almost a scale amount of pressure on with them. That's the bearing fitted. Time to rotate the crankshaft and see what happens. And what's that? A knocking noise. Oh dear, the piston seems to be hitting the bottom of the cylinder. When I was putting the pistons on the piston rods I did notice that quite a lot of the piston rod was actually protruding from the piston. So now, by slackening off the nut in the centre, and using a pair of circlip pliers, I can move the piston into the right position on the threaded piston rod. But I have to remember that the cylinder covers that I made also have a bit of a protrusion on them that goes down into the cylinder slightly. So I need to make sure that the piston is adjusted so that it doesn't hit the cylinder cover at the top either. That looks about right for the piston travel, so now I'll put the engine back to upright, and spin the crankshaft and see how it feels. Yes, it feels slightly tight at the bottom, but that will soon wear in. Finally, once again I'm painting the flywheel, and this time it's very exciting, it's the other side. So for the next couple of days, every time I'm in the workshop, I'll give the other side a coat of red paint. And then probably, the absolute pinnacle of excitement, I will give the front surface the very final coat. 
Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.